Today we're going to look at this nice double sum and we're going to evaluate it two ways. So the double sum in question is the sum as n goes from 1 to infinity of the sum as k goes from n plus 1 to infinity of n squared over k factorial. And the first method that we're going to use is to switch the order of summation. So I've drawn a picture right here of the lattice points that we're summing over. So here I've got the n axis and then the vertical axis is the k axis. So notice the values of n we take are 1, 2, 3, 4, so on and so forth, you know, infinitely many of them. But then k starts at n plus 1 and goes to infinity. So that means when n is equal to 1, k is equal to 2, but then k could also be equal to 3, 4, 5, 6, so on and so forth, because again, it's going infinitely large. But then if n is equal to 2, k starts at 3 and then goes 4, 5, 6, so on and so forth. So like I said, we want to change the order of summation here. So that means we want to start with a k sum, or I guess like really end with a k sum. The outermost sum is now a k sum. And then the inner sum is an n sum. So let's maybe first focus on the n sum. So notice the smallest value of the n sum will still be equal to 1. And then the largest value will be equal to k minus 1. And so that's like from summing from here to here. So notice we're summing from n equals 1 to n equals 2, but 2 right here is k minus 1 because k is equal to 3. So I've got a k minus 1 as my upper sum here. But then my values of k will start at 2 and go to infinity. And that's because k starts at n plus 1. Notice k here starts at 2 and then goes forever and ever and ever. Okay, and then the sum that we're taking is the same, or the sum and, I should say. So we've got n squared over k factorial. But the good news about this is we've got a formula for the sum of the first k minus 1 squares. And in view of the inner sum, k factorial is a constant. So that means we can sum up those squares using a standard formula, like I said. So here we've got the sum as k goes from uh, 2 to infinity of, so let's see, it'll be 1 over 6 times k factorial. I'll just put the k factorial with the 6. And then we'll have k minus 1 times k times 2k minus 1. So again, that's from the sum of squares. I'll let you look up that formula if you don't remember it. But now what we'll do is take this, this k minus 1 times k times 2k minus 1, and I want to rewrite it in kind of a tricky way. And maybe let's expand it first. Or maybe first let's think about this 2k minus 1 as a 2 times k minus 4 plus 3. And I'm doing that because now I can write that as 2 times k minus 2 times k minus 1 times k, and then plus a 3 times k minus 1 times k. That's from kind of multiplying that out and then factoring the 2 from the 2k minus 4. And I want to do that because notice that I want to interact nicely with this k factorial that's in the denominator. So it's nice to put this in terms of a descending product in the numerator. Okay. So now let's split this into two sums. So I've got this sum as k goes from 2 to infinity, and then maybe the first one will be based around what I'm underlining here in orange. So let's see, I've got that 2 over 6, which will give me a third out front. And then after that, I've got k minus 2 times k minus 1 times k over k factorial. Now that's going to simplify a bit, but we'll get to that. But maybe before we get to that, let's observe that if k is equal to 2, we plug that in, we get 0. So we might as well start that at k equal to 3. Okay, now let's write the next sum. So that's going to have a half out front because we've got that 3 over 6. And then we've got this sum as k goes from 2 to infinity of k minus 1 times k over k factorial. Okay, so that's looking good. But now let's simplify each of these. 
So let's observe that we can cancel this numerator here down to a one if we replace this k factorial with a k minus three factorial. Just using the fact that k factorial is k times k minus one times k minus two times k minus three factorial. And then we can do something maybe in parallel over here, cancel this down to a one, and then this will cancel down to a k minus two factorial. And then after that, we'll re-index each of these sums. So I'll still have my third out front, and then I've got my sum as k goes from, uh, now it'll be zero to infinity, because we want to re-index this so it starts at zero, which means we're, we're gonna replace k with, let's see, k plus three, and that's gonna leave us with one over k factorial. And then we've got plus a half, and then the sum as k goes from zero to infinity of another one over k factorial, where we re-index there by replacing k with k plus two. But observe that that's gonna be one over three times the number e, because this is a well-known series for the famous number e, and then plus a half times e. So putting that all together, we have five over six e as the final value of our sum. Okay, so now let's look at another strategy for this sum. Okay, so this next strategy is a little bit different. We're actually not gonna change the order of summation here. Okay, so what I'll do is start by factoring this n squared out of the inner sum, and I'll have the sum as n goes from one to infinity of n squared, and then I have the sum as k goes from n plus one to infinity of one over k factorial. But what I'd like to do is add in the first n terms, well, starting at zero, so the first n plus one terms, and then subtract them as well. But notice if I add in the first terms, then I have the sum as k goes from zero to infinity of one over k factorial, which is e. And then if I subtract them, I have to do minus one minus one over one factorial minus one over two factorial minus all the way down to one over n factorial. So I'm left with something like that. So now let's observe that that stuff in parentheses is exactly this sum right here with the, you know, one over k factorial. I just added and subtracted the first bunch of terms in there. Okay, so from here what I'll do is introduce a function. So let's introduce, maybe I'll call it y and just think y as a function of x, and it's gonna be the sum as n goes from one to infinity of n squared, and then e to the x minus one minus x over one factorial minus x squared over two factorial minus all the way down x to the n over n factorial. So it's like the difference between e to the x and one of its Taylor polynomials. And now let's observe under this setup, what we want is y evaluated at one. Because, well, that's just gonna give us our sum up here. And we're gonna do that by finding a differential equation that this y satisfies and then solving that differential equation. So let's look at y prime. So if we have the sum as n goes from one to infinity of n squared, and then the derivative of e to the x is e to the x, and then the derivative of each of these next terms are kind of nice together. So notice the one will go to zero, this x over one factorial will become one, this x squared over two factorial will become x over one factorial, and then so on and so forth. So in the end, we have minus one minus x over one factorial minus x squared over two factorial. That's coming from the x cubed over three factorial that we don't explicitly have written down. And then the last one that remains is x to the n minus one over n factorial. We don't go all the way up to the ending point because we don't have something after that in our original function. Okay, nice. But now what I'll do is add and subtract the last term back in. So maybe I'll put plus minus and then we'll have the sum as n goes from one to infinity of n squared times x to the n over n factorial. Now I'll take the minus and put it with this sum right here and observe that we achieve y. So let's see, we'll have y and then after that we'll have a plus 
the sum as n goes from one to infinity of n squared times x to the n over n factorial. So we've got something that looks like that. But after that, we can take this n squared and cancel it down with this n factorial to an n minus one factorial. I think that's a fairly obvious thing to do. Okay, and then what do we wanna do from there? Well, now I'm gonna take this n and I'm gonna write it in this goofy way as one plus n minus one. So let's see what that does for us. So now we've got this as y plus the sum as n goes from one to infinity of x to the n over n minus one factorial, but I'm gonna write that as x to the n minus one and take an x out front. So that's from the one from this like weird expansion that I have here. And then for the n minus one, I'll have the sum as n goes from one to infinity, but it's actually two to infinity because if we set n equal to one, that's gonna cancel. And then we'll have n minus one over n minus one factorial, giving it n minus two factorial by that simplification that we've done. And then we've got x to the n, but I'm gonna factor two of those x's out, leaving us with x squared, and we'll have x to the n minus two, just so that the exponent and the factorial thing in the denominator match. But now we've got some well-known sums there. We could re-index them if we wanted to, but I don't think it's strictly necessary here because it's kind of obvious what these are. We've got x e to the x plus x squared e to the x. So check it out, starting here, and ending here, we've got this nice differential equation satisfied by our y. So let's solve that differential equation and then use the solution to find our final sum. Okay, so after rewriting some things a little bit, we saw that our y satisfied this following. It's a first order linear differential equation. y prime minus y equals x e to the x plus x squared e to the x. And now let's observe that we have an initial condition as well, y of zero is equal to zero. That's kind of obvious because we'll have e to the zero minus one, which is zero, and then we'll have all of those terms, which are also zero. Now I'm gonna divide this e to the x both to both sides of the equation. That'll give me e to the minus x y prime minus e to the minus x y y equals x squared plus x. Maybe I'll change the order there. And now I'd like to observe that this left-hand side looks like the derivative has been taken with the product rule. In fact, it looks like the derivative with respect to x of e to the minus x times y. Check it out, it's exactly that. But that allows us to take the antiderivative of both sides of this equation pretty easily, leaving us with e to the minus x times y on the left-hand side because the antiderivative and the derivative cancel. And on the right-hand side, we have a third times x cubed plus a half times x squared, nominally plus a constant. But because of our initial condition here, that constant is zero. But now observe that we, what we want is y of one. Well, we're pretty much there. Notice that we have y equals e to the x times this x cubed over three plus x squared over two. Meaning if we evaluate this at one, we get that same value that we had before after just a bit, bit of simplification. And so there we have it. We've evaluated the sum two different ways. And of course we got the same value because it's the same sum. So maybe post in the comments which method you like the most.